Hey, what's up everybody? I wanted to continue with my mix hacks videos. Wanted to show you something that totally changed the way I think about mixing, the way I think about sound, the way I think about music. And it's a simple thing that you can do maybe once a month. It's basically ear training. It'll change the way you think about frequencies and sound and develop a philosophy about your mixing, about the way you approach mixing, the way you hear sound. It'll change the whole way that you think about mixing and music in general. It's a real simple thing to do. Get any kind of EQ that can that you can set um, a brick wall, two bands. Uh, you can do a, a brick wall high cut, brick wall low cut. Any any EQ will work. And you see here we have the frequencies in the in the basically the human ear spectrum. I think the human ear is up to twenty thousand kilohertz. I'm not sure. Let me know. Maybe it's twenty. Maybe it's less than that. But I know as you get older, you hear less. What? Oh. I know you hear less as you get older and that's why doing this ear training and visualizing and, and reaffirming what you're hearing is correct is a good thing to do. Uh, it's kind of like recalibrating, but if you've never done this, then what it is, you're learning in the very beginning where certain instruments in music fall on the frequency spectrum, where there might be potential problems. Let's say a bass guitar and a kick drum or a kick drum sample, they're obviously taking some of the same frequencies up and you wanna learn that area. You wanna learn where is that area? Where could that problem be? You wanna learn where the magic of a vocal take is and you wanna learn that area so that you can make room for the vocal if that's the most important thing in the song, which usually is if there's a lead singer, uh, a lead vocal, you want to be able to make sure that other instruments aren't fighting and competing, taking frequencies away from what you want to cut through the lead vocal. Let's take the drums, for instance, and just start from the very beginning. So I can't hear that. 20 hertz and below is probably stuff that you should only feel. So let's move up to here. Now we're only hearing between about 20 and 33, and there's probably no way you're hearing this on YouTube unless you have me hooked up to a subwoofer, which I hope you don't because my voice is irritating enough already. But uh, <laughs> anyway, this, if you're in the studio, you're only feeling, you're feeling this vibration. And so you start to learn what part of the instrument or what instrument, you know, usually this could be an 808, a sub bass, a sub, uh, a Moog keyboard synthesizer bass. This is the low subby part of a kick drum, the overtones from the uh, kick drum itself. Let's move up. So now you can start hearing still the kick drum. And this is more of the whoop whoop part of the bass drum. It's not the beater head yet. It's the middle, it's, it's the middle part of the, of the kick drum complete sound. Let's move up again. Okay. So this is kind of the higher tones, the higher tones of the kick drum. Okay. Now you can start right in the. So right around 170, you can hear where the actual kick drum pedal is hitting the drum, the, the high end of that, the snap. So let's say you want more snap in the kick drum. This might be the area that you, that you would adjust or you want less, you want the kick drum to be less snappy. So when you have a good frame of reference of knowing where to at least aim for you hear something first and you want to fix something or or make something better it's nice to have a frame of reference or exactly where you're going to look for in the frequency range and the only way to do it is to do something like this and study and do ear training and study where where things are placed okay so now i have a bass guitar and i'm going to start from 20 to 33 hertz and now i can i can feel it rumbling in my headphone but you can't really make out the tone of the note that's more of the stuff you're going to feel but that is so important in the mix also 
you don't want too much of that. I mean, a good name for that would be Earth or Sub. You, if you got too much of that going on, then there's going to be a lot of problems down the line in your mix. You definitely need that there, but you have to control it. And so when you are learning about frequencies and where you need to control, you need to learn where this lies in the mix. Let's move up to let's move up to uh, this is now we're hearing 50 to around 100. So you're starting to hear the note. A hundred to two hundred. Hearing some of the overtones, some of the harmonics of the actual bass note. <laughs> Sounds like a little toy, but um Okay. Okay, so that would be this this area would be the where all the definition is. So let's say you're listening to your bass and go, man, I need more definition in the actual note, the string. I need to hear the grunge of the string. You know, you'll know right away where to where to go on the frequency range, at least the, as a starting point. You know, and you can come in here and and boost those, or maybe it's too it's too detailed, it's too gritty. And then you know to come in here and and that's the frequency that you'd want to start with. But again, it starts with with training, training your ear where you're supposed to look for on the frequency spectrum. Again, bass guitar. Getting more into the air side of it. OK, now I have a piano and an organ track playing together. I see where this lives on the frequency spectrum. Again, in the subby tones, more of a vibration. You're not really defining notes. Mm -hmm. and a lot of magic is in the 500. You can start making out the, the notes, the chords, the tones. I mean, it's all pretty self-explanatory. You can hear the different parts of the instrument in relation to the frequency, what part of that instrument you're hearing. 5K, you're just hearing the, the, the real attack of the piano. So again, let's say you want the piano doesn't feel like it's attacking enough before you even hit a compressor or anything. Maybe you want to adjust the frequency uh, 5K, bring that up to get more attack going. With ear training, you'll you'll know where where to start. You'll know what frequency to start at. Where is attack on the piano? Well, around 5K. 2K with, with that area, at least on that piano. More of the warmth is going to be and here, this is the base of the piano. And then air is usually associated with around 10K, which on this piano, we don't have anything going on there. It's rolled off. Okay, now we have a couple pads, a couple synth pads set up. Same thing. So, you know, a lot of instruments start around 50 to 100 is when you can start making things out. You go in and you're listening to your mix. The pads are too boomy. Uh, what frequency do we do we attack? Where do we start? This ear training will help you identify real quick where you need to go. The 
the vocals up, lead vocal and background vocals. We did roll off some of the low end, so you're not going to see frequencies below maybe 50. And of course, that's to get rid of any you know floor noise from the or ambient room noise from the mic recording, which usually you don't need. Uh, there's no rules, but I like to roll off vocals most likely, usually around 50, 60 hertz, which is right around here. So you can start hearing some right around here. You can start hearing some of the boominess some notes coming through at 100 on a vocal, especially on a male vocal. So lots going on between one and 200. But you can't make out what a singer is saying here. So you understand that that's not the area of definition. That's going to be a lot of the mid range energy in a vocal. Okay, 200. That's a lot of the, the muffy area. That might be an area that is creates a lot of problems. Again, just listening, doing ear training, listening on a vocal, what 200 hertz sounds like on a male vocal. So this is 200 to 363. Okay, now you're starting to hear where some of the energy, the knockiness, the nasal part of the vocal is coming. Telephone voice. Because you're not hearing any of the low end below 400 and you're not hearing anything above 750. Five to a thousand. So a lot, a lot of information in that area. And the goal with the ear training and the goal with mixing is to have all these areas complement each other, not just within the actual instrument or the vocal, but the overall mix. And that doesn't happen without some ear training like this, understanding where everything lies in the frequency spectrum. A lot of people believe that this area, 1 to 2K, is really important for a vocal, lead vocal. If you listen, you can see why. There's lots, lots of things going on there. So that is a lot of the definition of words. Our ear perceives this frequency definitely as clarity now this is getting into real higher register of the clarity five K okay this is more into the sibilance area moving up and there you just not even really understanding what the word is or hearing a tone this is just real the real high end sibilance and but oh so important to have that there in combination in it hard to see a reflection when you're trying to gain a reaction star well, tell me now what's with all the well i hope that helps a lot that ear training exercise helped my mixing help my musician skills it helped everything for me from live sound design to uh, overall mixing to just understand where certain instruments will fall in the frequency spectrum, how they interact together, and to visually know where to go if I need to fix something or enhance something. Uh, this is great to do once a month, recalibrate your ears. I hope you guys liked it. Like and subscribe, peace.